All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again to bring you another video. This one's gonna be doing somewhat of a dead updates type of video. In this one, we're gonna give our thoughts primarily on the battle beginning between Kirkman and AMC. Fine, and a happy belated Valentine's Day to all the girls out there, all the special girls out there. Uh, you know, Valentine's Day is such a girly freaking holiday. I didn't have a video yesterday, so I'm going to say it, but, uh, you know, my favorite Valentine's Day ever has to be No Way Out. You guys remember that? The episode actually premiered on Valentine's Day, and you have the scene where Rick's, like, cutting Jesse's hand on Valentine's Day. Uh, brutal, but uh, here's a Lindor chocolate for you guys digitally, so there you go. That's Valentine's Day Walking Dead style, right? <laughs> Uh, Rick Scover gets her hair cut off. Uh, so <laughs> Link will be in the description so you guys can go ahead and check this one out uh, from Deadline.com where they've got it. So it has begun. Um, this one I was kind of, uh, I don't know how I feel about this one. So here's what the title says and you guys can read it through uh, yourselves in more detail if you want to see everything. But it's Walking Dead EP, Gail Ann Hurd tells Robert Kirkman, Prophet's trial uh, that uh, ex-AMC boss Charlie Collier promised a fair deal and uh, it's, quote, buyer's remorse, uh, the uh, cables, uh, uh, cabler's lawyer says. So what is going on with uh, Kirkman versus AMC? So this one is, uh, it's kind of sad actually for Walking Dead fans because this is like, you know, the comics versus the TV series. Like it's like, you know, the creator of The Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman, uh, versus, you know, AMC, which is the network that brought, you know, uh, what I would say is the, uh, I think it's the premier uh, TV series of the 2010s. So if you look at the 2010s, uh, you can make an argument for Game of Thrones. But for me personally, I just feel like, you know, Walking Dead, AMC TV series, the 2010s, I think it was the best series on. And, um, you know, so you have you have the two parties that are that are uh, you know represented. Like one, of course, the creator of The Walking Dead itself, with Kirkman, and on the other hand, you have uh, AMC, which really brought it to that next level. Like for example, in the 2010s, the first trade volume of The Walking Dead being the best-selling comic book trade of that entire decade. Now that would not have happened if it wasn't for the AMC television series uh, to promote uh, the, the comics and everybody went and checked checked out the comics after they probably have saw it or heard about it on TV and realized the comics were really good too. So definitely the TV series helped promote the comics and would have helped uh, Kirkman out to you know sell however many freaking <laughs> copies of the comics uh, him and Charlie Adler uh, actually did or, or sold, right? You know, how many, how many, um, you know, I don't know, millions and millions of copies or, or tens of millions of copies of the comics that they actually were able to sell over the run. I mean, it must be just a ridiculous amount. But so this is the legal battle. So it continues from uh, Frank Darabont, who I guess his started like seven years ago, or at least that's what it said. It was a long time ago when uh, the first uh, major lawsuit for The Walking Dead uh, came out from Frank Darabont, who had gone with Robert Kirkman and kind of pitched it to the different networks AMC picked up The Walking Dead and, you know, the rest is history It becoming their biggest series they've ever had. It's spawning spin-off series Fear and, and World Beyond now and then the movies and, you know, everything else they're going to uh, they're going to do with it. Uh, them using that for AMC Premiere, which is, you know, a big thing as well, too, uh, because if you guys know, like, Premiere uses Walking Dead to promote its uh, itself. And if you didn't have Walking Dead, it'd be difficult to promote Premiere. Um, so how do you factor that all in in terms of profits and, and just what's going on here? So first there was the Frank Darabont lawsuit. Now is the uh, producer's lawsuit, I believe, you know, led by Kirkman, I guess you'd say, as the, as I mean, as the creator, if it's going to be the front runner. But Gail and Hurd involved here, too, and some of the others that maybe you've seen on the, um, you know, like like the Blu-ray special uh, edition uh, uh, scenes, that like when they go behind the scenes and you, you can hear her kind of talk about it and some of the others. So uh, some notables uh, that are involved with the success of the Walking Dead that helped create it and help make it what it is. So what's going on now between uh, them? It's a, you know, this is a huge lawsuit. Basically, uh, we'll read it through together, but uh, it is it is very sad to see the two parties that are most responsible for The Walking Dead becoming a worldwide phenomenon, uh, the creator and the network that uh, that made it, you know, uh, what it what it is. Um, 
going going to battle like this in court. Um, so it's over profits of the series. It's over, you know, uh, originally what they had signed up for when they were kind of uh, shopping it around, as, as uh, AMC, uh, you know, said there in the title, buyer's remorse from deadline. You know, it's, it's basically they... Uh, they signed, and uh, so the gist of it from what was going on with Frank Darabont in that lawsuit was that there was an imputed fee for what they got. So, so you kind of have this is what Frank Darabont had accused them of is self dealing, where you have one arm of AMC that's that's basically, I guess, uh, selling the series, which is made kind of in house, if you will to the other part of the company. So you have two internal parts. One part that's actually producing the Walking Dead series, selling it to the network, okay? And um, as you read this through here, it sounds like, you know, and I think Robert Kirkman has said before uh, in, uh, I think at one of the Comic Cons or whatever, that he actually made more money off the comics than he made off the TV series, which that doesn't sound right. But basically, if the profit sharing was a profit of what the imputed fee of the series was sold to itself for. So you have the series that's done, you know, by that arm of AMC, and it's selling it to the other arm, which is going to be using it for for everything else, and you know, showing it, replaying it, everything like that. So it's sort of like if they buy Better Call Saul or something from, I think it's Sony or Breaking Bad or something like this, then the amount of profit that I believe uh, the parties that are suing now are getting is an imputed. Uh, some kind of profit margin of an imputed fee for what the series is being sold to AMC for. So, for example, with uh, I think with Breaking Bad and with some of the others, they're done by a separate party. They're sold to AMC, and so the the parties involved would get, I would think, a, a percentage of of that, and then it's sold to, to AMC, and then AMC gets to do what they want with it, basically, and whatever they make on it, they make on it. So I guess maybe when they originally had signed from the sounds of things, and I may be wrong on some of this, so read it through yourself and, and see the legal stuff gets crazy with big companies like this, right? But basically, um, it sounds to me like they're getting a percentage profit of what it's sold to AMC for, I think, and not sort of a more or an imputed fee and not some kind of overall arcing fee but it's you know it, this is really tricky on how they're gonna <laughs> i think the other one after like seven years is gonna enter uh judgment i think it's in like uh i think it's in june this year coming up uh for frank darabont's one so this one's kind of following suit with that uh, as well too you know everybody they're trying to get theirs too but maybe rightfully so because if it's like you know they didn't get the amount then they thought they were going to get some kind of overall percentage and they didn't they just got an imputed fee percentage instead which is like way lower than than what you know you'd get if you got some kind of overall but it's it's hard to say because how do you kind of factor in everything the walking dead affects on the network you know it's it, it's going to affect your premiere sales you got all your products that go with it your figures and your blu-rays and your all this stuff then you have fear somehow how that works in and it's it's five seasons that it's had and how you work this whole thing in so it's pretty um you know, it's pretty difficult to say and pretty crazy, but let's read through uh, some of the article to see what's, uh, what's going on. So it says, for a trial probing potentially millions in profits denied Robert Kirkman and other executive producers of The Walking Dead, some real star power showed up Friday on this battlefield of the zombie apocalypse uh, blockbuster series. Quote, the representation uh, to me uh, was we would be treated the same as if it was made by Lionsgate or Sony, who made Mad Men and Breaking Bad. The Walking Dead executive producer Gail Ann Hurd said on the stand today, I guess it would be yesterday now at this point, Friday, uh, with a caveat of, quote, words to that effect that then AMC boss Charlie Collier uh, told her in 2010 of expected profit participation payouts for the outlet's first in-house production. So I didn't know that it's it was basically the first in-house production of AMC. They must have thought that it had some potential, and they were right as far as that goes, that's for sure. Um, so then it continues on here, and it says that uh, what seemed to not be in question is that according to AMC, the ever-expanding universe of The Walking Dead is supposedly, or is supposed to be a money pit. Uh, at least the now 10 seasons and counting mother show is, quote, uh, by using an artificially low imputed license fee formula, the show is falling further and further into deficit with zero payments to participants uh, at least the last two years. One of the uh, Bird Morella lawyers representing Kirkman Heard and fellow uh, Walking Dead EP 
David Alpert in their uh, near three-year lawsuit told Judge Daniel uh, Buckley's court this morning of the AMC series. So when you read that, that makes it sound like they're basically getting nothing for it and that whatever the series is being produced at is kind of like zeroed out or in a deficit, which is really weird to hear. But like I said, it's going to affect all those other things, so they're going to get it on the other end. So I guess the question here is whether or not, um, you know, for what they signed up for, if they're more deserving of what they get on the other end or whether the imputed fee actually makes sense. So that's what the argument really is. So a uh, court uh, that, quote, I believe it was a group. So this is uh, an initially cheery Kirkman soon succeeded Heard and Alpert on the stand to tell the court that, quote, uh, I believe it was a group decision to file the suit, uh, which claims AMC ripped the producers off to the tune of millions of dollars, similar to an earlier uh, East Coast uh, $300 million case launched by Walking Dead exec Frank Darabont that we that we talked about uh, seven years go ongoing for that one. So this one's probably going to be a really long one too. This probably won't be resolved until like 2025 or something, or maybe maybe even longer. Who knows, right? You never, <laughs> you never know. Following a very, uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. But that's based on the first one. Uh, following a, a fairly brief uh, exchanges of yes and no answers to the questions of uh, from Snyder, Kirkman was off the stand in less than 20 minutes in the so-called mini-trial. Once Kirkman stepped down, Snyder dismissed the uh, nearly three-year-old legal move uh, by the EPs as, quote, buyer's remorse after having already reaped millions of dollars off the success of The Walking Dead. Um, starting off with a couple of, I don't recall, and I don't have any knowledge of uh, every uh, network it was pitched to. Heard spent the most time uh, in the witness box Friday, uh, almost as much as Kirkman and Albert combined. And at first, uh, having inked a 7.5% profit participation agreement with AMC more than 10 years ago, industry vet herd was uh, led by, okay, so that <laughs> continues along here. Uh, yes, but I was also surprised at the success of Terminator. Heard scathingly informed Snyder at one point when he asked if the AEP was surprised by the huge success of Walking Dead uh, had following its premiere in Halloween 2010. However, Heard wasn't buying into Snyder's uh, overarching premise that AMC was really the only home and audience foothold a zombie TV series was able to find in that very different era of over a decade ago. Well, that's that's true. Let's stop there for a sec because there wasn't streaming like Netflix the same way it is now and the, all the other networks where you could, you know, there's going to be shows like crazy, right? It's just going to be like there's so many. It's crazy. Um, you know, so so it's like that was a totally different time where getting a greenlit was not actually that easy from the sounds of things. Uh, give that uh, True Blood was a success at HBO. I'm not surprised that a horror series was a success, but I was surprised it was a success uh, that it was or as it was, so as popular as it, uh, as it got. So uh, I won't read the entire thing through, but that's basically what's going on. You guys can read the rest through yourselves if you, uh, if you want to. They even go into Talking Dead, which was, meant, was always meant to be a promotional device for the show. Nothing more, nothing less. So again, it spills over to all this other stuff, and it's like, you know, whatever. They're going to battle it out. They're going to fight it out. You know, in terms of my thoughts on it, I just think it's sad that it had to come to that and that they weren't able to kind of settle it some other way or something. But I guess it's sort of one of those. They signed the deal. They didn't really know it sounds like 100%. Uh, what they were signing for with regards to AMC and that's what it was and so that's what the whole dispute is about and uh, you guys can leave your comments below on whether or not you think uh, they'll win the, the lawsuit against AMC or if AMC because they signed on the dotted line if AMC has some uh, dead to rights uh, pun intended uh, for for this one. One of the popular theories was also that the Walking Dead comics might have gone on further or maybe maybe Kirkman would have wanted to do more with the Walking Dead and uh, somebody had said that AMC soured him on his baby, uh, which I you know I don't necessarily if it's true because I think he's still involved with the movie that they're doing and, and even loosely with the TV series and the other series they're doing to some degree. But, uh, you know, I hope it's not true. I hope that, you know, uh, he always had intended to end The Walking Dead at some point and he didn't, like, it hasn't had an effect on him of whether or not to do more comics or, or more stuff with The Walking Dead license. Um, I hope that, you know, all this stuff that's happened with, uh, you know, um, with AMC and that and these the, the legalities of it haven't deterred him from doing more with the property because he did create it. And it is kind of strange that it's such a huge success and that he's not really using it anymore because he just kind of ended it off. But whatever, maybe that's what he had intended all along to do is to end at a certain point, do a great story, and then that's it and not really use it anymore to saturate down or something. So I don't know. But again, 
you guys can leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about that one. We've got uh, a couple of different questions for for today. And there's some different kind of like red uh, red trailers that they've been showing for Walking Dead, like uh, the characters on kind of a red red backdrop and stuff. I think there's one where Michonne like screams and stuff like that. So I don't know. You know, will they kill Michonne off? I <laughs> I tend to think if they do that, it probably means they're probably not going to. So I don't know. But there's lots of little. You know, they've been doing a pretty good job. I think this year of kind of releasing lots of different you know, little clips online stuff to try to promote the season. So I'm excited for next weekend. Uh, it's going to be good. I, you know, can't wait to see Walking Dead return and, and lots more this year, you know, week after week. It should be great. So uh, Jack Goldberg had said, uh, God, <laughs> uh, Banging Alpha has to go down as the biggest taking one for the team example ever for Negan, right? So, <laughs> so uh, that's true, right? But it's like, can he say no, right? It's like, this is he going to be able to say no if, uh, if, if it's forced, right? So, um, <laughs> maybe not. So, Jason uh, Serecho says, uh, Andrea better looking than Michonne in the TV series. Andrew Lincoln should have read ahead in the comics and been like, you can't kill her off. Uh, so, he thinks that, uh, that uh, maybe Andrea would have been a better, um, you know, uh, potential uh, mate for, for Rick in the TV series than Michelle. Well, I mean, the thing is with Andrea, once they did the storyline where she was with Shane, right, and then she was with the governor too, you can't have her be Rick's, you know, like, thing after that. Like, it can't be, you know, her and Rick after that when, um, you know, like, she was already, you know, it's like, we're even worse than Lori at that situation if that was the case. So I think it made sense that, uh, that they didn't do that any further and that, uh, you know, well, it's kind of sad they killed off Andrew so early, but it makes sense too once they, once they went that route with her, it's like they couldn't go back kind of the rest of the way. Anyway, that'll be it for today's video, guys. Let me know what you think, mainly about the uh, uh, the Prophets battle. And I'll see, maybe I'll have a new video for you guys pretty soon uh, in the next few days or something if we get anything, you know, a good that's worth uh, talking about. But otherwise, if not, you know, that's cool. And maybe we'll do a couple this week leading up to the return. And then, you know, once Walking Dead is back on, lots more videos going forward after that. That'll be it for today's video, guys. Let me know what you think. If you liked it, please thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite, and subscribe at the bottom left. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys again soon for another. As always, this is Trev. Same peace later, guys. See you soon.